Thanks for watching this free video tutorial, which is a free sample from our course Comprehensive Introduction to Arnold 5 for Maya. It is a massive 9 hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of Arnold for Maya thoroughly. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out. In this lesson, we learn about depth of field in Arnold for Maya. Depth of field is the depth of the area in the render that is in focus. So for example, in this render or in this image here, these cubes are in focus and as we move away from the cubes, the image becomes blurrier. We have two type of depth of field, narrow depth of field and wide depth of field. A narrow depth of field or shallow depth of field is when a very small portion of the image is in focus and depth of field effect is more obvious. We can call this render, this image here, a narrow depth of field. And we have a wide depth of field where a large portion of the image is in focus and the effect is not that obvious. This is the scene we're going to be working with. We have these small animated cubes. They are about 10 centimeters. And as you can see, they have some dynamic animations. Let's go to the last frame here. And we have this camera in the scene. To see any object distance from the camera at any given time in the display menu and heads up display, make sure object details is enabled. Now when we select any object in the viewport, we can see its distance from the camera and use that value as the focus distance in our camera setting if we want that object to be in the focus. Now select the camera and let's come down to the Arnold tab and here we have the depth of field or DOF options. Right now enable DOF option is unchecked so we would get no depth of field and it would be like working with a pinhole lens. So let's enable it for now. The first thing is to actually define the focus distance. Let's say we want this cube particular here to be in focus. So we can select it you can see its distance from the camera is 329.875 centimeters. So if I select the camera and type in 329.875 as my focus distance, now we are sure this cube will be in focus. Now let's open up the Arnold render view and run the IPR. The next thing is to actually define how much blurring we want. Uh, either a shallow depth of field or a wide one and that can be done using the aperture size. Aperture size is the radius of the camera's aperture. So the smaller the value the wider the depth of field and when I increase the aperture size depth of field would be narrower and shallower and more obvious. Now by default it's set to zero so even though we have enabled the, the DOF option checked we don't get any depth of field in the render. Now let me set the aperture size to five now we clearly getting a shallow depth of field increasing the aperture size will result in an even shallower depth of field and decreasing it will give us a wider DOF. Now let me show you three renders with apertures set to 1, 5 and 10. In the first render which has a small aperture size of 1 we get this wide depth of field and in the second render with larger aperture size of 5 we get obviously narrower depth of field. And in the third render with the aperture size set to 10, we get a very, very shallow depth of field. So the larger the aperture size, the narrower the depth of field. For now, let's set the aperture size to 20 to get an even narrower DOF. Also, let's select the material that is assigned to these cubes and set the IR to 5 and roughness to 0.2 so we can explain the rest of the parameters a bit easier. In the render settings, let's increase the camera samples to six to get a cleaner depth of field compared to what we have. You need to increase the camera samples to have a clean and noise-free depth of field effect. Now, another deciding factor when we think about depth of field is the scene scale. If I scale my scene down 10 times, we're going to have a much narrower depth of field with the same aperture size. And if I scale up my scene, let's say 10 times, we're going to have a much wider depth of field effect. So your aperture size is going to need to be adjusted based on the scene scale that you have. We have aperture blades, which is the number of blades of the polygonal aperture. Zero is considered a circle aperture. Now if I set it to 3, we're going to have a triangular aperture shape. 
let's take a look at the snaps that we have. The aperture blade in this render is set to zero. And in the second one, it's set to three. And you can clearly see this triangular aperture shape in the second render compared to the circular one in the first render. Let me just draw a very small render region in these out of focus areas. Aperture blade curvature controls the curvature of the polygonal aperture sides. Zero means hard straight sides and increasing this value will result in progressively more curved edges. Uh, one will produce perfect circular aperture and negative values will create pinched aperture. So the previous render, you can see the curvature was zero and we get this straight sides. Now if I set the curvature to 0.3, we get this curved edges. And if I set it to negative 0.3, we get this pinched sides. Now let's set it back to zero for now. Aperture rotation allows you to rotate the aperture. I can rotate it as I wish. Let's set it to 45 degrees. Now compared to the previous render, we have rotated the aperture sides and the triangles are looking another way. Now let me disable render region and set the aperture blades, aperture blade curvature and aperture rotation to their default value of zero. We have aperture aspect ratio to simulate anamorphic lenses. Higher values than one will uh, stretch the defocusing effect and lower values squash it. Now let's set it to 0.1, 1, 2, 2 and 4. By increasing the ratio, we are having more stretched out the focusing uh, basically areas. Now let's set the ratio back to one. Let me stop the IPR and select the material for the cubes and set uh, their IR value to 1.52 and roughness to 0.1. And in the render settings, set the camera samples back to four. If I wanted to alter the focus of my camera and focus on the cubes in the back, I can simply select one of the cubes in the back, take a look at its distance from the camera, which is uh, 419.768 and use that value as the focus distance in the camera. So 419.768. Now, if we run the IPR, you can see we have altered the focus of our camera and the back cubes are in focus now. We stop the IPR and change the focus distance again to 329, which was the previous focal plane. And change the aperture size to something like five and uh, render the scene. And the render would be this snap that I have already stored. As you can see from the render, the depth of field is pretty noisy and the only way to clean it up is by increasing your camera or AA samples. So let's increase the camera AA samples to seven and take a look at the resulting render. We have a much cleaner depth of field compared to when the samples were for. Obviously, if we want to, we can decrease the other samples to compensate uh, but I'm gonna leave that for you. So that's about depth of field and I will see you in the next lesson to talk about motion blur in Arnold. See you there. Thanks for watching this free video tutorial which is a free sample from our course Comprehensive Introduction to Arnold 5 for Maya. It is a massive 9 hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of Arnold for Maya thoroughly. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out.